welcome back to Keto with Lee, your low carb lifestyle channel. Today's episode, I'm super excited to share with you what was shared with me. And it is a low carb keto bread recipe. So if you are new to my channel, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can continue receiving my fabulous recipes. And remember to hit the notification bell. That way you're alerted when something new is posted. I am going to share my journey, whatever that may look like. Bear with me. I am learning as I go. I've only done this a couple years now um, as far as YouTube. So my editing and my website and everything has been self-taught. So bear with me. If you have suggestions, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I do read your comments and I do try to answer as rapidly as possible. Please bear in mind, I am married. I am a mom of three, so I do run my household as well as this channel and my website and social media. So please bear with me. I'm not looking for a kudos. I'm just letting you know that if there is a delay in a response, that is why I am a busy woman. But anyways, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to share with five people you know. And now, let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to use, we're going to be doing this in our mixer. Um, there's one cup of warm water. You will be able to find the written recipes uh, at www.ketowithlee.us. Now be sure that that water is warm and not hot, okay? So one cup of warm water because we're gonna add our instant yeast. This is one tablespoon of instant yeast. So if it's hot water, what's gonna happen is you're going to um, kill it, okay? You, you'll kill the, um, the yeast. Now to activate that yeast, it needs something to wake up. I'm gonna add one tablespoon of raw honey. I get it at my local grocer. This one I just happened to pick up at, I believe it's um, Good and Gather, so that is from um, Target. It's raw and it's unfiltered. Don't freak out, guys. I know everyone's like, you're not supposed to do honey on a ketogenic diet. Well, this is going to eat it. The, um, the yeast is gonna eat this up. So I'm gonna mix this really quick. It's already starting to activate, look at that. It's already starting to bo uh, bubble, as you can see. So we know these fellas are good. Let me tell you, it's not easy making these bread recipes and finding, you know, texture-wise, what we're looking for. So it, it is difficult. If you haven't seen my other recipes, they don't require um, the honey and all of that if you're worried about that spiking your, your insulin. Um, my other recipes are used sort of like a fat head dough, but it's not. I do bagels and I do biscuits. So give those a try. I've had raging um, reviews on those. People love them, so go ahead and try those. I'll go ahead and link those to this video. I call them biscuits or rolls and you can add any flavoring that you want um, to make them like a garlic cheddar roll or be creative guys be creative so I'm gonna go ahead and link the rolls and the bagels now the next item we're gonna um, add what I'm gonna do is let this sit aside do you have to do that part no you really don't um, I'm doing it because as a baker, I'm, I'm used to, I say a baker, a home, home chef, right? I'm used to going ahead and letting those two get acclimated over there. See that? With the bubbles. That's what you want, guys. That's what you want. So I'm letting those guys get acclimated while we do mix all the dry ingredients. So in this bowl, I have one and a quarter cup of the Vital Wheat Gluten. This may be the only ingredient you go online for, um, maybe not. Maybe by now it's at Trader Joe's or Sprouts or even your local Walmart. I ended up going online because of the lockdown 
and I wanted to make sure I had it on hand, so I ordered it online. I'll do, in the description, you're gonna find a link to all the products I'm using here, except for stuff like the eggs, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the water, because that's from my faucet, or my refrigerator filter. Okay, so in here is one and a quarter cup of vital wheat gluten. Now the vital wheat gluten, from what I've read, it is keto and it is um, vegan, it is non-GMO, the one I purchased. So go ahead, I believe it's Anthony's, the brand. So go ahead and um, check the link in the description to get this, okay? So to this, we're gonna add um, two tablespoons of powdered swerve. Now the original recipe can be found on Deidre's Kitchen YouTube channel. Now, I'll put that link in the description as well. She uses four tablespoons of sucrin. Sucrin is erythritol and so is Swerve, okay? And it's the powdered version. If you don't have powdered, I suggest that you go ahead and put your granulated sugar substitute into a food processor or a Ninja, a blender, and, and you can blend the amount that you need, okay? So once it's in there, measure it two tablespoons. I don't like my bread too sweet, that's why I'm using two. So that's Swerve. Powdered Swerve. You can use monk fruit, because monk fruit, sucrin, and Swerve do not increase your insulin, okay? Flax meal, okay? So if you only have the flax seed, go ahead and again, use your Ninja, use your, um, I'll link my Ninja, because I love that, that sucker. Um, so Ninja, um, you can use a food processor. Everything's gonna be in the description, everything I use. This is flax meal, and it is, how many? Two thirds of a cup of flax meal. If you hear the dishwasher in the background, or the children, hey, this is life. I'm washing dishes, I'm also washing clothes and drying clothes. I just fed the kids, and now I'm trying to make bread with you. Don't you love it? All right, so, the next thing xanthan gum so this is half of a teaspoon of xanthan gum do you have to do this no i like it because it adds a chewy texture to the bread as well um and then the instant yeast we put over there to acclimate with the with the honey and everything that is actually the packets of yeast and i just opened it up into a container and i measured out a tablespoon or if you have the big pack you know do your thing um, what's the next thing? Oat fiber. Now, this is not oat flour. This is oat fiber. The fiber, because it's um, without the flour, okay? So this is gonna help with texture as well. Oh, these yummy things. And the one that I use, I'll post below. I did get it on Amazon, I believe, because, again, of the lockdown. I ran out. Um, this one is actually a premium oat fiber, and it is three grams of carbs, but three grams of the dietary fiber, so it ends up being zero net carbs. All right, so if you are gonna use butter that is salted, don't add salt, okay? But the recipe does call for one teaspoon, and I use my favorite all the time, which is pink Himalayan salt. So now I'm gonna get a whisk and whisk this together, and then we'll continue. So in the microwave, I am melting two tablespoons of butter. All I like to do is get them all mixed up. Our butter is ready. I just microwaved it to melt it. So now that we have all our dry ingredients here, I'm gonna go ahead Get our butter, and it's two tablespoons of butter, and because I used salted butter, I did not add salt to this mixture here, okay? I'm gonna set that aside. Going back to this one, look at that. It is bubbly, amazing. So we're gonna give that a good stir, but first I'm gonna add my two tablespoons of butter, and I'm gonna give that a little whisk. All right. There we go. 
All right. To this, I'm gonna add our powder mixture. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. All right. And then on top of that, we have two eggs that are already beaten. So I just beat them in here. And from here, guys, we are gonna head over to the mixer. Wait, before we do that, what I like to do so it's not like a powdery mess, I go ahead and mix this a little so it's all kind of wet and I don't get that powder everywhere. You guys are gonna love this, I promise you. It's amazing. Now let's go over to the mixer. All right guys, so now I don't have a hook. Um, I was trying to put it on, it, it got so nasty. Um, my hands turned black, so I was like, ew, so I don't wanna use it. Anyways, pretty sure I did something wrong to it. But here we are. So I'm gonna mix it on medium. I do it slow just so it all gets um, in there, because all those powders, like I was telling you. And now I'm gonna, did I lock it? Yeah, it's locked. Now I'm gonna go to about a four. And we're gonna do this for five to seven minutes. Everything's getting mixed in there. So I'll be back to show you what it looks like after five to seven minutes on like a medium low, okay guys? So I'm gonna stop it really quick. Oh my God, <laughs> don't do that. I'm gonna stop it really quick um, because I see that the bottom in there is not really mixing really well. So I'm going to grab doing this one-handed guys so bear with me I am gonna get this and get this off of here amazing yes yeah, so, super excited you know when you when you find a low carb option or a ketogenic option for breads it's amazing that actually have that texture, you know? All right, so that's good. Let's get that back in there, lock it, go back. All right, we have reached, I did six minutes because I don't feel like it needed more than that. You can see how fluffy it is. It's all incorporated and ready to go. So now I'm gonna transfer this to our greased dish. So hang on tight. There is our bread. Isn't that amazing? It is, wow. See how it springs back? That is what you want. So what I've decided to do is I went ahead and used this coconut oil spray. Um, I actually got this at the Dollar Tree. Not ashamed to share that. Great deal for a dollar. I am looking for my cutter because I am going to go ahead and cut a piece of the dough and try and make two bagels. I just thought about that because we're gonna let this rise for an hour, but first, let me see if I can cut it right in here. stretchy that is that is amazing so the last time I made this bread it was extremely huge that's probably gonna be a huge bagel that's probably gonna be too big so let me just stretch this out more um, this rises contrary to the popular belief that these things don't rise because they are low carb or keto let me let me just tell you something honey this gluten stuff is amazing get this out the way it looks gross so yeah I know I normally use gloves but I just got right into this I'm so excited look how it stretches oh my gosh okay so I am trying this for the first time to see how it comes out as a bagel because I did love and appreciate the texture that this has. Oh, I hope you guys love this and share this video. You can also go check out how to make this in a bread 
um, maker. Um, the recipe for for that is on Deidre's page. So I'm gonna leave that here. The other one, I am going to show you. I greased the pan just like I greased those suckers, even though they are um, silicone, I still do that. But we're gonna um, fold it like that. Ooh, this has some weight to it, okay? We're gonna fold it like that, kind of like oblong. That's what um, Deidre says to do. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, and I'm gonna put that here. Now, I'm gonna grab a piece of plastic wrap. All right, so I got my, my plastic wrap. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna spray it so that when it rises, it's not gonna stick to my stuff. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the microwave because it fits in there for an hour. Don't have to do much to that. And this, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna put this one in the oven because you just need a, a nice dark place for these, for these guys to um, activate the yeast. And once it has been an hour, I'll be back to show you what they look oh, like. This is the bread, look at that. Dang. One hour. And look at that bread. Oh, amazing. And let's check the bagel mold. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm preheating the oven. You're gonna want the temperature at 375. And look how much the bagels rolls. And see it didn't stick, so that's a cool trick there. Look at that. Give you a side preview there. Oh, I can't wait. Wow, super fluffy. Amazing. So this is what we have, and we're gonna go ahead and go into the oven. As you can see there, it rolls. This is one hour, look at that. Amazing. Now we're ready to go into the oven. I just started to preheat my oven to 375 Fahrenheit. And we're gonna bake it for 20 to 25 minutes and then allow it to completely cool before we slice it. So once it is baked, I will show you what it looks like. This, <laughs> this is at 20 minutes. You could see the bagels became warm like a roll it's very light and fluffy so i'll cut those open soon so you can see what that looks like and i only did 15 minutes on those because they look ready to me i don't want i didn't want them to get burned and look at this bread loaf what do you think Jaden? that Ooh. that looks fat listen nice and a little crisp on the top and this fluffy inside so we're gonna let this cool off completely and then I'm gonna show you what the inside looks like mm -hmm. 